So what is up guys, Brendan Suter back and today I am here with my 2022 Toronto Blue Jays May recap. Now this has been a very interesting month as we were 14 and 12. Now uh, the first three weeks had really shown that the Jays seemed to be more talk than action as uh, we were just floundering. Uh, the pitching was doing an amazing job but the offense was horrific. However the final week of May had really shown what the Jays are fully capable of. Now I'm going to be getting into the pros and cons of the month, uh, surprises, disappointments, best moments. So without further ado, let's get this video started. All right, so to start it off, I'm going to be talking about the cons from the month of May. Now, usually I would start off with the pros, but with how the first three weeks played out compared to the last week, I feel like cons would be a much better place to start. So the first con I want to get into is the offense. Now, um, currently the Jays have a 239 a uh, batting average, 309 on base percentage, and a 391 slugging percentage. Now, when you compare that to the month of May, we had a 248 batting average, 308 on base percentage, and a 416 slugging. And uh, currently, raw and had an OPS plus of 105. We're currently at a 100 OPS plus. Now, what had this major dip off? Well, it's pretty simple the first three weeks. Now, when you look at the first three weeks for the Toronto Blue Jays, we had a 209 batting average. 286 on base percentage, 318 slugging percentage, and a WRC plus of 74. Now remember, 100 WRC plus is league average. Anything below a 75 is considered poor. And we had a 74. And it doesn't get much better when you look at our situational averages, as with no one on, we hit 241. Uh, have a 302 on base percentage and a 403 slugging percentage. This is for the entire season and not just the month of May. And then when you look at runners on, we hit 238 with a 318 on base percentage, somehow higher, but a 375 slugging percentage. And then when you look at runners on, we hit 211 with a 302 on base percentage and a 347 slugging percentage. Now with the month of May, like the first three weeks, like we just could not capitalize. Now sure we had a few games where the offense would surge, but most of, once again, it was mainly just one-run victories in low-scoring affairs, and the games that we were losing, either we were getting blown out, or our pitching would be able to do its job, and the offense just could not do anything. Now, another big con that I saw in the month of May was the bullpen, as we started off with a 3.8 ERA in the month of April, which is okay, but then it went down to a 4.15. When you look at our FIP, it was a 3.74 in April, and a 4.51 in uh, the month of May. Now, uh, our best reliever of the month was surprisingly David Phelps, which definitely came as a bit of a shock to me as uh, he had a 1.74 ERA, so he did a good job. And a couple of other good guys that we had were like Jimmy Garcia, Adam Simber, and Tim Meza in the short time that he was there. Now, Jordan Romano, he was okay this month, but he had one bad blow up against the New York Yankees. And there were a few save opportunities that he had where he made it look a lot harder than it should have been. Well, this does bring me into one of my next cons, which was uh, the injuries. Now, the biggest injury that we had sustained was, in my opinion, Tim Meza. Because our big three was Adam Simber, Tim Meza, and Jordan Romano. And once we lost Tim Meza, finding that lefty was an extremely hard job. As Ryan Barucki was so bad this month that we ended up DFAing him. Uh, and Andrew Vasquez, he didn't do much of a better job. Now, he wasn't that good in the beginning of May, but he's shown a little bit of progress at the end, so hopefully that's good. A few other guys who were pretty rough in the bullpen were like Julian Merriweather and Trevor Richards. Of the injuries that had the most significant impact, in my opinion, were the ones that were lingering on from April. As Teoscar Hernandez, obviously he was injured early in April, and uh, part of the month of May, you know, we were still having to rely on Bradley Zimmer and Ryan Maltapi, who didn't really, really bring a lot of offensive value. They were just more for their defensive value. Now, when Teoscar Hernandez came back, he had some growing pains as he hit 151 with a 195 on base percentage and a 233 slugging percentage, had an 18 WRC+. plus. Now, that was in the month of May, and he was just horrific. However, in the last week, uh, he had shown significant amounts of improvement. So, obviously, the injury, I'll let that slide. And, of course, Danny Jansen being out. Uh, obviously, Alejandro Kirk had an excellent month of May. But it was really in the backup catchers where the biggest issues lied as Zach Collins gets demoted to AAA and Taylor Heineman is not even on the team anymore. Even missing Hyunjin Ryu became a problem. Even though he was a huge liability in the month of April, Ross Stripling was interesting as in April and his first start of May, he was pretty good. But his last couple of starts, he was just completely horrific. And once we got Hyunjin Ryu back, he was doing a decent job. So... Uh, Ross Stripling has kind of just been put in that role of just bullpen guy with the occasional start that he's going to make. And the final con I want to talk about with the uh, month of May is some of the decisions that were made by Charlie Montoyo. Now, 
Obviously, in the month of April, he had dazzled me. I'm thinking, wow, this guy has taken massive improvements. Now, in the month of May, this was the concerns that I was having about Charlie Montoyo in 2021, and they were beginning to resurface. Now, some of the biggest issues that I had were the way that he would handle certain pitching situations. Now, number one, uh, sometimes he'd be letting guys go way too far. Now, Jose Barrios, a couple, he had a couple of good starts in uh, the month of May, but a few times he was getting lit up in the later innings. And the big mistake was Charlie Montoyo not pulling him earlier when he was starting to show signs of drowning. And there was a whole lot of questions as well as to how he ran the bullpen, as sometimes in the most high tense situations, he was looking to like a Ryan Barucki or a Julian Merriweather, as opposed to trying to go for one of their better guys like Jordan Romano. Now the game that perfectly demonstrates what I've been talking about comes with May 23rd, against the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, at this point in the game, we were up 3-1, to one, and Jose Barrios, was, uh, his pitch count was getting pretty high, and it seemed like we should have pulled him after six innings. However, he gives up a home run to Juan Yepes, which made it 3-2, to two, and then he gives up two singles, and then eventually uh, Montoya's like, yeah, no, now's the time to pull him. Should have pulled him sooner because uh, the Cardinals were going to tie the game and eventually win in an extra inning. And then we get to extra innings as we have runners on first and second with two out, and we go to Ryan Barucki. Now, he was having a horrible month of May. And he walks uh, Amendo Sosa and then gives up the walk-off Grand Slam to Paul Goldschmidt. Now, honestly, I think in that situation, I would have put in Jordan Romano because it's a high-stakes situation. Sure, it's not a safe situation, but you need one out. You're going to rely on Ryan Barucki over Jordan Romano. And his post-game excuse was absolutely atrocious. And it still made me really question him. Now, I want to start talking about some of the pros for the Toronto Blue Jays. First things first, the starting pitching. Uh, without it, there is no way we would have been 14-12 and 12 in the month of May. Now, uh, first got, couple of guys I want to talk about is uh, Kevin Gosman. Now, obviously, he had a historic start in the month of April. Now, obviously, May, you're not going to really replicate that. But he still had a pretty solid month with a 4-2 record, had a 2.72 ERA, and a FIP of a 2.21. So, excellent stuff from him. Not quite historic. But it was still good enough. And then um, Alec Manoa. Man, he had, once again, a phenomenal start to April. And he followed up super well. He was 1-1 one one with a 2.03 ERA. He had a 3.15 FIP. You know, not quite as good as, like, Kevin Gosman's FIP. But still, it was an amazing month from him. Now, in my opinion, he kind of got Jacob deGrom. Which is basically where you have an immaculate pitching performance. But your wins and losses don't really demonstrate that because your offense completely fails to support you. And even Hyunjin Ryu, after having a horrific month of April, he goes on IL. Uh, he comes back and he was okay in his time back. Uh, he had a 2-0 record, had a 1.72 ERA, and a 3.74 FIP. So honestly, not bad. Like, obviously, it was not amazing as, you know, in most of his starts, he wasn't able to go deep. But significant amounts of progress was shown. And honestly, as long as he could be at the back end of the rotation at this point, all is good. And of course, the defense uh, still stayed as strong as ever as we ranked 6th in uh, defensive runs saved and ninth in uh, outs above average. Now, obviously, like they say, offense sells tickets, but defense wins championships. Obviously, Matt Chapman, Santiago Espinal, Bradley Zimmer, Ryan Maltapia, George Springer, they all bring a significant amount of of defensive value to this team. Now I want to talk about Bo Bichette. Now, obviously, the month of April for him was horrific. Now, of course, that was just a complete slump. And the month of May really showed that this is the Bo Bichette that we're used to. As he hit 296, had a 339 on base percentage, 537 slugging percentage, and had a WRC plus of 149. And he rose his uh, OPS plus from a 57. Now, anything below a 60 is considered unsuitable for the major leagues. And he brought it up to a 107, which is above average. So obviously, Bobochet has taken massive strides. Now, obviously, he's still a big chaser. That, that part hasn't changed about him. But he's making contact with the ball. And all, honestly, when he wasn't making contact, that's when he was really struggling in the month of April. And now that he can make contact all of a sudden, he's back to being himself. Now, the final thing I want to get into with the Blue Jays is the final week of May. As in the first 20 games, we had scored 61 runs and had an average of 3.05 runs a game. Now, in the final six games, we had scored 41 runs, and that doubled our average runs, as now we went from 3.05 to 6.83 runs in uh, the final week. Now, we had a 300 batting average, 381 on-base percentage, 521 slugging, 
and a 156 weighted runs created plus. This is what we had been waiting for. An offense that can hit home runs, uh, score with runners in scoring position, have everyone make a positive contribution to the lineup. Now, near the end of that uh, six-game streak, uh, Teoscar Hernandez and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. were starting to heat up, and everyone in the offense was already doing pretty well. So with a fully juiced up like Vlad Jr. and Teoscar Hernandez, you better watch out because this offense is lethal. This is what I've been waiting for, and it's so exciting to see. Currently on a six-game win streak to end uh, the month of May. Now, hopefully we can keep this going, maybe break the franchise record, who knows. And there have even been a few other guys who have shown uh, significant contributions to the offense. Guys like Santiago Espinal, he's been so goddamn good. Uh, George Springer, uh, Kevin Biggio, when he came back from IL, he started to get hot, and now he's uh, uncomfortable keeping him in the starting lineup. Uh, and Lourdes Gurriel Jr., he had a massive breakout series against the Los Angeles Angels. He was pretty bad before that, but all of us, ever since the Angels series, he has been showing those massive improvements. Now I want to start talking about some of the surprises from the month of May. First big surprise was Yusei Kikuchi. Now obviously the month of April, he was horrific and obviously being the fifth starter, uh, he was just a massive letdown. But all of a sudden in the month of May, he got good. Now a couple of big things that changed is uh, he wasn't throwing his cutter as much and usually at the top of his windup, he had a bit of a hesitation before he would throw the ball. But all of a sudden that hesitation stopped. And he had a 2.36 ERA, a FIP of 2.66, and he went from an ERA plus of 69, a nice ERA plus, to an ERA plus of 111. His strikeouts are up. His walks are still a bit of an issue, but they are not as bad as they were in the month of April. And sure, he still gives up hits, but that's part of his game. And honestly, now that he's doing this well, he's honestly become like our third or fourth best starter because he's right now ahead of Hyunjin Ryu, and Jose Barrios, but I'm going to I'm gonna get to Jose Barrios later. Now, one of the biggest surprises from the month of May actually came from the catchers for the Toronto Blue Jays. In particular, Alejandro Kirk. He had a rather rough month of April, but in the month of May, he turned it up to a whole nother level as he had a 347 batting average, 415 on base percentage, 569 slugging percentage, <laughs> nice, and a 181 WRC plus. Now, the thing about Alejandro Kirk is he's not a guy that's going to strike out. He does not walk, he walks more than he strikes out, and he makes a lot of contact, has one of the highest barrel percentages in the league. Now, whenever he does make contact, it's kind of soft and always like in the area where um, outfielders are never going to reach it. Now, I was talking with my friend Anthony, and uh, he told me that it's it low-key kind of pisses him off to watch Alejandro Kirk see how he's always reaching with that soft contact, but I'll be honest, I don't care. It's getting on base, and that's what matters most, and he has just been honestly our best player this month and then of course Danny Jason now he only played about half of the month of May but when he was back uh he was just mashing now he only had a 229 uh, batting average and a 289 on base percentage however he had a slugging percentage of 571 which was the highest of any Toronto Blue Jay in the month of May even just a just two points higher than Alejandro Kirk now obviously he was hitting home runs had a WRC plus of 142 and an isolated power of 343. Look, anything above a two point, above a 250 in isolated power is excellent. And Danny Jansen was just mashing home runs. And currently among catchers, the Blue Jays are tied for first with the highest war for a catcher, which is 2.1, as they're tied with the Texas Rangers and Chicago Cubs. And that to me is just insane. Was not expecting that. And now I want to get into the disappointments. First things first, Jose Barrios. It has been a horrific month of May for him. We gave him a massive extension in the offseason, and he follows up with this. In the month of May, he had an ERA of 7.01, a FIP of 5.02. His ERA plus went from a 91 to a 69. And that's not a time I want to say nice. Because he went from slightly below... at like slightly below average to horrific. Now, one of his biggest issues is the fastball. The forcing fastball, he's just getting hit like left and to the right. And uh, one other issue that he's had is uh, honestly with his durability. Now, nah, this one, I don't fully blame on him because Charlie Montoyo, there's a few times where he should be pulling um, Jose Barrios a lot earlier, but uh, sometimes when he leaves him in a little bit too long, he's going to get smacked around and then Montoyo's going to be like, oh wait, I made a mistake. Time to try to fix it. Now, another big disappointment in the month of May was actually our home runs, which is something I was not really expecting to say. 
Now, in the month of April, we were first in home runs with 30, but we were 24th in May with only 21 home runs. We're currently 13th uh, in the MLB with 51 home runs. Now, obviously, I partially blame the MLB for this because they claimed that they didn't change the baseball, but they did because one thing I've noticed is that a lot of our home runs are coming from line drives as opposed to those high fly balls. And obviously, they're like the high fly balls, like it looks like it's going to go out, but it's just going to completely die out and get caught at the warning track. Now, obviously, the MLB, the, the whole issue with the baseball has just been going on for years. And obviously, when we were not hitting home runs, we just could not score runs in any single way. Now, from the span of May 1st to uh, May 23rd, which was our massive slump, uh, we were 28th in the league with 12 home runs. Now, obviously, we were doing horrible with risk. And once the long ball was completely taken out of the equation, that is when our offense just it hit a huge rut. Now, I found this to be similar to the Houston Astros in the 2019 World Series, as once the long ball got shut down, their offense just could not do anything, which is why they lost to the Nationals. And the final disappointments I want to talk about are of Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Matt Chapman on the offensive side. Of Vladimir Guerrero Jr. in the month of May, he hit 217 with a 333 on base percentage and a 348 slugging percentage. Now, he was still getting on base a lot. He was still taking walk still limiting the strikeout still has a bit of a high uh, whiff percentage uh and he had a wrc plus of 97 his ops plus downgraded from an elite uh 162 to an above average 126 and uh, obviously one of the biggest reasons why he had regressed so much was due to his high ground out to air out ratio as he had a 2.05 ground out to air out, air out ratio which was fifth among hitters in the month of May. Now, Vlad Jr. is always going to have a great exit velocity, but with his bad launch angle, uh, it's obviously, it's leading to a ton of ground outs, which are horrible for him, because if he's getting, like, more line drives, he should be hitting way more home runs and should be way more effective on offense. Now, once again, in the last couple of days of the month, uh, he has been significantly improving, and we should be seeing the old Vladimir Guerrero Jr. quite soon. And then Matt Chapman. He still brings a significant amount of defensive value to this team, but his offense this month was horrific as he hit 179 in the month of May with a 286 on base percentage and a 286 slugging percentage, had a WRC plus of 68, and went from an above average 109 OPS plus to a below average, almost getting to that uh, poor 86 OPS plus. Now, Matt Chapman's biggest issue uh, was the strikeouts, as obviously he has a 22.4% strikeout rate, which was ninth among Blue Jays in the month of May. But uh, the top four guys had less than 30 plate appearances, and the guys with more than 30 plate appearances were all way more effective on offense than Matt Chapman was. Now, once again, he still is significant on defense, and he's he's shown a little bit of improvement to end the month. Not as much as like Teoscar Hernandez and Vladimir Guerrero Jr., but I, I think eventually Matt Chapman is going to break through. All right, now we look at the schedule of June for the Toronto Blue Jays, and I'll be honest, it's moderate. There's a couple of tough teams, but there's also a significant amount of easy competition that we're playing. So obviously we have to play our final two games against the White Sox. Then we have a three game series against the Twins at home. Then we go on the road to play three games against the Kansas City Royals and then three games against the Detroit Tigers, followed by four games against the Baltimore Orioles. That stretch from the Royals, Tigers, and Orioles, that might be one of our easiest stretches of the season. They've all been not good this season. Now, the Twins have had a solid season, so that's going to be a fun matchup. Then we have a three-game series against the Yankees. That's going to be a fun uh, kind of revenge tour. Uh, then we face the White Sox again. They've been moderate this season. Uh, then a three games against the Milwaukee Brewers in Milwaukee. They've been amazing this season, and I cannot wait to face them. Fin finish it off with three games against the Red Sox. They've been disappointing. And then one game against the Rays, and they've been pretty good this season. So overall, like I said, a few tough competitions here and there, but there's a lot of easy teams that we're playing, so we need to capitalize on those games. Right, so before I go to the outro, I want to give my top five moments from the month of May. Honorable mention goes out to the Blue Jays fan who caught Aaron Judge's home run and gave it to that Yankees fan. That was such a sweet and heartwarming moment. Anyways, coming in at number five is May 24th against the St. Louis Cardinals. Otherwise, what I would consider the day that the Blue Jays offense was revived. Uh, number four, I have Alejandro Kirk's two home run day against the White Sox. It was against Lucas Giolito. He's damn good, and I love Lucas Giolito. So it was fun to see, but it hurt a little bit. Uh, number three, we have the um, Matt Chapman to Vladimir Guerrero Jr. game ender against the New York Yankees on May the 4th. That was just such a hype moment. Uh, coming in at number two, we have George Springer's uh, game-saving catch against the Houston Astros. Had he not made that catch, 
we go to extra innings and possibly uh, lose that game. And number one, I have the uh, final game against the Los Angeles Angels when we pulled off our very first sweep of the season, won 11 to 10 in game of the year. On to the outro. And that is going to wrap up my video for today. Thank you guys all so much for watching. If you want to watch um, my April recap, uh, click right over here. Uh, if you like this video, drop a like. Uh, subscribe by hitting uh, the button here or the subscribe button down below. It would mean a whole lot to me. Uh, comment down below what your thoughts were on the Blue Jays month of April, uh, month of May. Uh, were you impressed? Were you disappointed? What were some of your favorite moments? Best player for the month? Uh, follow me on all my social medias, uh, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok at Brennan Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Uh, the Toronto Blue Jays fan base is out.